let the champagne flow. I'm Vanessa Canby and in the Living in Ghana series I interview people who have moved to Ghana from the diaspora. So I just bumped into me, we're looking at this land here and I found your, your story so interesting. So you moved to the UK when you were 27 and actually I moved here to Ghana when I was, I was 28 I think yeah. and now you've moved back or you're in the process of moving back to Ghana 30 years later. Oh that's an interesting one. I think uh, in the process of moving back I have moved back just like I said to you the missus said to me like uh, Niada when are you coming back to the UK and I said to the missus missus I do not have any intentions of living in Ghana forever uh, I don't have any immediate of intention of coming back to the UK. <laughs> yeah. um, it's good here, mm -hmm. enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the peace that um, I have in here. Yeah. What <laughs> relocation? There's a wind. There's a lot of wind, which is nice for the you know area, but not nice for filming. Um, so yeah. So what was the reason that you moved to the UK in the first place? Well, basically, um, times were very difficult. I think that was in 1990, and. Um, Everybody was aspiring to be out there to seek for greener pastures. So uh, I did join the Exodus so to, to, to <laughs> go and uh, look for money and I bring back home, yeah. What was going on back then in 1990 here in Ghana? Well, there was so much going on and um, I think not a lot has changed that um, you've completed your education and there are no jobs to do. You, you see friends, colleagues, enemies traveling and they come back in and um, you can see the progress so you mm. want to be a part and parcel of uh, the exodus to see what's on the other side of um, uh, the, the ocean and exactly that's what I did. And was it worth it? Well um, in a way in a way I, I am grateful um, what I've always said is that no two people have the same experiences traveling outside so a lot of the times when I speak I speak generally and then I can actually come in with my personal experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, my experiences one way or the other has worked well for me in a way. Yeah that's right yes. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, so you're glad that you... you... Oh yes yeah, without a shadow of a doubt I mm -hmm. am I'm quite glad. Yes, um, uh, the difference is that I set my standards and um, my limits is what I am okay with mm -hmm. not the expectation of uh, everybody. So uh, in my little small way mm -hmm. I'm happy with the little that I have achieved, yeah. And what did you do whilst you were in the UK? Oh, uh, that is interesting. Um, Work-wise, when I was in the UK, uh, throughout my time in the UK, I work with the National Health Service. Oh, so did uh, my dad actually. Uh, that is interesting. Yes, um, I did uh, psychiatric nursing, but ended up uh, specialising and working in one place doing forensic nursing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, forensic nursing. Oh, nice. It's basically working with um, mentally disordered offenders. Oh, I see. So were you working in prison? In a prison? Well, not in or, a prison. Or because as, they're in a like Basically, a this is health. what happens here. Um, <clears throat> forensic nursing has to do with uh, the mental disordered offenders. And uh, that is to do with um, the secure units. We have medium secure units. We have high secure units like Broadmoor. Mm. And then we have low secure units. The thing is, uh, I think the system has been set in such a way that prisoners who fall ill cannot be treated in prison. Right. Yeah, so they have been treated in the place which comes between the hospital and prison. Mm. And because of the endless offences that they have, they cannot be treated in ordinary hospitals or psychiatric wards. So we have the medium secure places, the high secure places, depending on uh, your offence. That's right, yes. It's really interesting. How was that? Beautiful. Oh, Be beautiful. Uh, it, it's an interesting and strange environment to many people, mm -hmm. but I felt so comfortable, I felt so at ease. And I think, um, I just don't know, my missus um, is a specialist nurse that is, um, you know, what do we call it, um, infection control and the stuff. Mm -hmm. I am not personally able to operate on a general ward or in a general hospital. Mm. When it comes to psychiatric forensic nursing, I just fit in there. I mean, it must be so interesting. <laughs> it is, it is very like interesting. Like people's minds, how they work. Yeah, because uh, there's uh, this fact that people think they are okay on the streets, but we think that we are safer on the wards with the people that you know, having their oh. history, knowing what uh, dangers they the, the risks that they pose. Yeah. Because an example, you go to Tesco, Sainsbury's and all those places, 
most of them who has income through the system and are gone off the net are working within the shopping centers on the streets mm -hmm. and you have no clue and idea who is who, yeah, but yeah. the secure units you know who they are we have systems in place that we keep you safe this. yeah mm, wow so it's also really interesting that you worked in the nhs your wife worked in the nhs and my dad also worked in the nhs so i feel like there's so many Ghanaians actually like working in the NHS yeah, loads. in the UK. Yeah, loads, yeah. Uh, why have you now decided to come back to Ghana? Well, uh, it's... Are you retired now? Oh yes, I took early voluntary retirement. Oh right, okay. I took um, early voluntary retirement when I worked in the service because um, working as a psychiatric nurse with the NHS then has special dispensations where mm -hmm. you could come on early voluntary retirement at 50 Mm -hmm. And at 55, you can go on a full retirement. But I think by the age 50, I think I have actually had enough. But then again, I had a backup plan mm -hmm. and I was investing in a property. So really smart. by the time I was 50, I was thinking, that, like, I am okay with the portfolio that I had. Mm -hmm. And um, I was about to take the plunge. How many properties did you manage to acquire? Oh, I mean, um, just on a little small scale. Currently, we are only talking about 11 houses. That's really good. <laughs> really amazing. Yeah. Oh, that is a small portfolio because that is um, what I think we are capable and able to, 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 to manage. Mm -hmm. And just like I said to you, um, I don't do stresses and um, I know where the cutoff limit is. Mm -hmm. And I take into consideration what I want to do, being satisfied with the life that I have, mm -hmm. those 10 and that the few that we have in here should be okay to sustain us and I to be passed over to the children, the two young boys, to continue from there. So that means now you have no worries, like you can just live off the passive income of the properties. Oh, that is basically what I do. And just like I say to you that um, because I define my boundaries in life and I define what makes me happy, mm -hmm. not what the world expects me mm -hmm. to be. You know, the, the problem, just like I was saying, is like, um, Coming back from the diaspora to live in Ghana, a lot of factors actually goes in there. I am not able to compare myself to a younger couple, a younger generation who have to come along with their children. They would have to take into consideration school, and it's not just the school, not just the fees involved, but the work involved. Mm -hmm. Depending on where the school is well, you have to pay some good amount of dollars to get Property. thousands years to yeah. get your children to our proper schools mm -hmm. apart from that i think to be the traffic you have to wake up early in the morning with the children that take them to school mm -hmm. you needn't have to go back so my experience is quite different mostly indoors mm -hmm. eating and sleeping <laughs> and enjoying my early pension <laughs> <laughs> that's nice that's the way it should yeah, be yeah 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 um but most of the time is the pressure that colleagues and uh, your peers actually have personally defined my boundaries. And uh, what I mean by that is that I decide uh, the things that I want to do and how I want to do them. And um, once I am happy with it, mm -hmm. the rest of the world, the expectations about me do not really matter. Mm -hmm. What I eat, what I drive, where I sleep is mine. Your, no, yeah. no competition. And that really makes a, a lot of difference. That means no stresses on me by society mm -hmm. friends and enemies alike you've definitely <laughs> taught me something today and i'm sure everyone else out there is like grateful for your insights on life and how you have managed to you know live your life and now be able to relax you know at your age some people work you know keep working 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 interesting age when is today today's um it's thursday is it uh, yeah yeah thursday yeah. i think um well the date the date i'm not too sure about what do you know for a fact is that come sunday that's going to be the 13th of March Sunday and that's my birthday, I'll be 58. Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for that, so yes, let the champagne flow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the like button if you like this as well. Send a happy birthday in the comment section below to me and yeah, wish you many more happy years. Yeah, thank you very much. What we have in actually said is that like, well, based in London, Mm -hmm. and, um, well, the place to be is London. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right, oh, okay. yes. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Thank thanks. you. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye bye, Vanessa. Nice to see you. <laughs>